Welcome everybody out there in the globe. This is your boy Brian Polito and Monty Moore. Welcome to the Monty Moore Shopping Show. Well, this is the first time we've ever done something like this, Monty Moore. What do you say? Uh, I think it's pretty darn cool. I, it's about time that I think comics and publishers, you know, just got the product directly to people and you're kind of the king of you know, kind of on the fly and offering unique stuff, I think, so. Well, super cool, man. We just thought this was logical, you know, but uh, so today I'll tell you how it's going to go. We're going live here from 3.30 to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going to go over the career of the wonderful Monty Moore, talk about some of the cool things he's pulled out of his warehouse that we're going to be offering to you guys soon, including Cover Up, which is a beautiful hardcover, and Magnifique, I can say it. Magnifique. Magnifique. Magnifique is cool. Magnifique. Um, uh, the idea was magic, imagination, and technique. Fantastic. So I talk about the art in there as well. So fantastic. And these aren't available in stores. It's true. So today, these books are no longer available on stores, and we're going to talk them up a little bit. Um, but they're available exclusively through uh, Lady Death's store and today. The other cool thing that Monty's going to be doing, and I think you're actually working on something, is Monty's going to actually offer them signed, and he will also do a remark. So, uh, I guess, uh, actually, before we get into selling, Monty, what brings you here to the Phoenix area this time of year? Uh, so, I've actually been here for almost a quarter of a year. This is the end of almost three months, and so uh, I decided to branch into a little bit of the fine art world. And one of the, the, really the top art areas of the country is Scottsdale and Phoenix. And so uh, there's a show called the Arizona Fine Art Expo, which sure. is in Scottsdale. Right. And there's a hundred artists that are from around the world. Uh, and you're there at the show every day and your booth is your studio. So there's artists doing uh, live bronze and wow. glass blowing. You know, I'm doing all the stuff that I do. So there's some of the finest artists in the world are all congregating. I can only imagine it gives you a chance to up your skills. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's probably one of the top sort of impressionistic uh, artists who's right next to me. There's a bronze artist across the way. Last year I did my first piece that I actually ended up casting in bronze, so I can kind of add sculpture to the resume. I've seen that. <laughs> and it really makes Monty more like a threat because I mean, you have so many skill sets. You could, you could paint vehicles, pinups. You could do still lives. I saw the watercolor and the bronze. I mean, the guy, the guy is dangerous. He's here. Well, folks, um, without further ado, let's offer up uh, and talk a little bit about Magenique. So Magenique is actually going to be offered to you guys live for $25. If you're interested in it, you can let us know in the comments. And Nick G is standing by to connect and PM with you. And let's talk a little bit about the book and show people some of the details. So, sure. uh, Magnifique is, I can do it. Ma Magnifique. Magnifique. By the end of this broadcast. <laughs> He'll be ruling in French. I'll no, get there. It's, so, it's a made up word. <laughs> so the $25 for the book and then Monty is happy to remark it for an additional $25. If you guys are interested, let us know in the comments below. Nick G will pick up and get immediately in communication with you. But let's talk about a little bit about the genesis of this project. Mm -hmm. So I had had two other books uh, previously uh, published through SQP, which was a, did a lot of gallery girl books, but I really wanted to do a book that uh, had a little bit more about technique and a little more insight rather than just pictures. So it started out uh, in the front part, we always kind of have the maidens, and so the first part's always like pinups. And there's actually some early chaos work in this book oh, very cool. uh, that we did back in the day. And then um, there's a color gallery section in the middle. There's a section on monsters and magic, a uh, little bit of D&D, a &D, little bit of comic. And so you can see some prelims before going to more detailed pieces and then getting into some of the color pieces will be in the gallery as well in the center part. Um, but of course, a lot of the fans of my work are fans of the female figure. So this book, like a lot of other uh, projects, have a lot of female figure, probably 80, 90% of the book. A little bit of the, you know, dragons and, and things like that are towards the back. Uh, but you can see here in the gutters and in some of the, the text, I talk about something unique about that particular image, whether it's a technique thing or something about the client or the deadline, and it just gives people a little bit more insight. Larry wants to know, is it 32 or 64 pages? Uh, 64. So this is a 64-page book, Larry, and if you're interested, just give us a message down below. And Monty could sign it, and he could also remark it for you. Mm -hmm. And because this book was the very first book I ever um, kind of essentially self-published, did the design, put it together myself, oversaw the quality. So it was better paper than previous books. 
Um, oh, here's a little interesting tidbit. This is one of the very first drawings I ever did for Brian and crew back in the day. And this was a prelim for a chastity. It was the only cover that I've ever done that was a sideways cover. Yep, that was a wraparound style that was done in maybe yeah. the year 2000. Yep, that's so about right. So we're talking 19 years ago. Cool so this is the only place that that's, that prelim has ever been seen other than, you know, by the the crew and, and back in the day. That's true, and we've only published it as the finished image, so mm -hmm. we never actually published it in prelim. Right, so that was just a... Francisco's asking how much? Uh, this book is $25. Mm -hmm. It got, comes signed by Monty. Of course, yep. If you're interested, let us know in the comments below, because this is a live selling event, and it's not currently on our store by design. Uh, please just put your name and in the comments, and Nick G is stalking slash monitoring you, <laughs> and he will catch you and start PMing you. Yeah. And we're going to have these ready to ship uh, almost instantaneously. So if you, oh, look at that Lady Death. So this was the very first time I ever painted Lady Death wow, back cool. in the day. It was pretty early in my career. I was trying to capture Brian's attention. So this piece wasn't published till years and years and years later. You included it in a calendar oh, neat. Uh, piece. Uh, were, so it was originally it was full color piece, and you can see that the skills have developed quite a bit since then. Uh, but we all start somewhere, and, and it shows a little bit of the growth as, as, as the, uh, the artist. Some other. Uh, I think that was one of the other prelims for. Oh, another prelim for chastity. For chastity. So that particular one wasn't the one that was uh, chosen, but. Uh, again, uh, a little bit of the history of the back thing. So little gems like that are in books like these that normally you're not going to find on websites or online. So there's the finished piece. Oh, there's wow. A couple more pre another, another prelim. Another chastity prelim and, and, and then, then the finished image. Yes. Yeah. That's really cool. Yep. Wow. Okay. For and chastity today, fans out there, I know yep. you're still out there. Yep. My cool little punk rock vampire gal I invented. Uh, it, that was my love letter to uh, UK punk rock. Oh, nice. Yeah, because that's part of her origin. She actually became a vampire. She was turned into a vampire while visiting England at the height of the punk rock era. Okay. Which I guess I wish I got a chance to go uh, go visit uh, England during the punk rock era. So Right. So Larry's asking, is that 8x10 semi gloss cover? So I would consider that, what is that, 9x12 uh, UV coated cover? I believe so. Yep, about yep. 9x12 UV coated color, 64 pages. Black and white interiors, uh, only available now. I think, I think the size though is just the regular eight eight and a half by eleven. Though. Okay, I'm wrong. Eight yeah. and a half by eleven. Eight and a yeah. half by eleven. Um, but I mean, it's a nice card, you know, cardstock cover. Nice cardstock like, cover, perfect bound with a nice trim. It's held up really nice to the test of time. Right. Yeah. And these books, you know, uh, until recently, and, and Brian and I uh, kind of hatched this idea. You know, they were they were in my archive, as you will, the vault. I visited <laughs> Monty at his at his uh, at his headquarters, <laughs> and I was snooping around. And I said, "Hey, man, I don't think the world has seen this in a little while. Why don't right. we bring it out?" And now here's the color section, which is quite beautiful. This is a very lovely piece. Thank you, Frank uh, Tui saying, "Monty, what's up, bud?" Hey, Frank, we're shaking. Thanks for joining us. Frank, nice to hear from you, man. <laughs> Another cool one, lady on a motorcycle. We got a couple of people interested in the book so far. This this piece here on the on the upper part here is is I'm one of only four artists that was ever commissioned by Playboy to do a limited edition print. It was called Uniquely Playmates, and so to be in a category with Olivia Walter wow. Gerardo and Michael Mobius, I was the fourth one selected, and then they actually stopped doing the series. Uh, so I, hopefully I wasn't the kiss of death, but. <laughs> I did get a, a really nice um, kudos from all the way down from high up in Playboy, including Hefner, and said, Wow. This is our favorite piece, and it was the only one that was never sent back for change. All right, Jeffrey Standish will take one. Right on. Appreciate Jeffrey that. Jeffrey Standish, thank you so much for taking one. Nick G will be right in touch with you. Uh, that's $25, signature included. Yeah, yeah, I never, never charge for signature. Monty never charges for a signature, no. and if you want to remark, just add an extra 25 Correct. Look at this cool image. There's another beautiful color image, and then to the uh, to the left of it, you're seeing, or your guys to the right, you're seeing an image of purgatory. Yep, and that was a um, special, we were working on that one as a Halloween edition. Uh, and I th I'm trying to remember if it was on one of the early, um, it was the very first trading card that was ever published in my work was the other Purgatory piece, not this one. But I don't know if that one was ever published. I don't recall that it was published. If anybody, any boils and girls, at ghouls out there know if we ever got to publish that one? I actually don't think so. No. no. So, I think there is an upcoming image, though, that we did print. So maybe yeah. this is the only place you can get that. I'm going to uh, jump pro over. Probably. Um, I know that the other little Purgatory is there on the inset on the back. 
Okay, um, let me jump over to there for a minute. Yeah. That's a nice piece I'm just passing over. Yeah, it's a kind of Dungeon Dragon stuff here in the back, and of course more pinup girls, uh, covers for uh, novels, things like that. I definitely saw this earlier. Let me, I'm looking around for the purgatory. Oh, I think you're in the monster section, so you gotta ah. kind of come back this way to the maidens. Yep, and so maybe it might be right in front of this other gallery. Uh, so this is the color gallery in the middle. Nice. There's Rob little... Delaro is still a Chastity fan. Hey, Rob. Rob, nice to hear from you, my friend. Yep. Uh, so I think... Where the hell did she go? Come back. I'll let you find okay. it. Okay. Chris Palma. <laughs> Chris Palma. Chris in Vegas. He says, I need a remark. All right. All right, Chris. All right. You're the first guy to step up, so your remark is just going to be hot. <laughs> yeah, we'll even see if... Jason Coates got remarks, too. All right, Jason Coates. You know what oh, we could do? Jason problem. Oh, man. Thank you, everybody. Oh, Thank you, remarks. Jason. Ah, okay, check this one out. So prelim on the on the right. Prelim. Whoa, okay, check out this cool classic Purgatory by Monty Moore. We did indeed publish this yeah, one. Yeah, 01. Yep. Yep, we published it in 01. It had a minimal amount of color, and it is cool. Yeah, right back here in red, it said, uh, bite me over the kind of be my valentine, and then she just had little red accents on her hands, some blood on her hands. Oh, that's cool. And uh, it, it's just a classic image people still love, and, and I like the fans, the fact that through the decades and everything like that, the fans have stuck with you. Mm -hmm. In particular, and and support the the characters that you've created, and and kind of seems like everybody's like you know come to the coffin side. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is a neat one. I think it's cool too that this book contains the uh, the prelim. So that's a look in brief at uh, I could say it. Let me. Can I do it? Mag, Maj, Maj. <laughs> French accent. Maginique. 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 I got to get French, it's man. It's magic, imagination, Maginique. And, and technique. So again, we have Maginique available here. Oh, you got it. Maginique. I got it. <laughs> 64 pages, perfect bound. Monty Moore, direct from the Monty Moore vault himself. Yeah. Available for $25 signed. Uh, Monty will just start cranking out his remarks as we speak. I'd like to thank everyone who's made a purchase of those so far, but soon we're going to give you an opportunity to add more things to your order. So without further ado, let's move on to our next project, which is called Cover Up, which is a hardcover, also by Monty Moore. Let's see from a size perspective. Similar in size, a little bigger. Um, definitely another square bound, full color. Yep. Monty, let's talk about this one. This one's going to be... The price is going to be $40 on this one, and again, $25 more if you want to add a remark, which Monty is happy to do. This is a great area for a remark, I think, personally. Oh, yeah, and then I, there's also a full blank page inside. So full people, blank. So people can just choose what they want. I can go here. I can use you know whites or silvers or whatever people want. Um, because I did a gloss inset, you can see that this has the... Sure, spot UV overlay. That's the one. Right, so this is a matte... Uh, yeah, this is a matte finish, which is really, really great for longevity. Mm -hmm. And then you did the spot UV on it, which mm -hmm. I think is super cool. You can actually feel the difference, too, where it's matte here and then right. suddenly becomes slick. Well, what I was trying to do, you know, take some cues from, I think, some of the, the best books in the industry. And you guys have uh, just even the tactile feel of, of the books and the quality of printing. And so... Um, uh, this is the first hardbound that I've ever self-published, and so this was a Kickstarter that I did two years ago. Nice, uh, and you supported it. I, I appreciate that. That's it, man. I and, support my yeah, favorite artists. Yeah, and uh, I hope to have you know one or two Kickstarters coming out per year as well. Cool. Uh, in the future, for e both comics and game projects. Well, here's uh, the back cover art, too. Artworks. Beautiful pinup. Yeah. Classic. So what I did on that one is I did a little inset of things from my career. Uh, here kind of on the electronic billboards and little Magic the Gathering guy and Helena, one of my first freelance jobs is a little cover for PlayStation. There's another art book over there. So just a little kind of inset of some of the other art. Yeah, that's also, well, it okay. Has a spot on it as well. Yeah, so the spot UV on the back cover is sort of a rarity and it's an additional expense. I know, <laughs> right? I know from quoting these kinds of things. So the notion that both sides have the spot is pretty impressive because usually people do the spot UV on the front, have right. it on the back on that figure. It's, yeah, it really gives it a really cool feel. And then the matte satin finish is really rad. And it helps protect the book too in, in both shipping and handling and longevity to, to have those kind of areas have a little bit of that on it. Absolutely. Oh, Brandy Moore Lawson is saying hello, Monty. Hey, Brandy, hope you're doing well uh, and all your uh, cancer recovery and everything is, is strong. So uh, keep fighting and we're all out there pulling for you. That's right. Fiend Nation is behind you. Yeah. Hey, so this hardcover, 
Uh, this is a horrible segue into the card cover is forty dollars, and the original one we showed magnifique. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should just change the title. Well, this is this is funny. This does speak to the fact that. You know what happens is I have the gift for gab, but there's certain words, boy. It just takes some practice. Well, you know, Monty is known for making up words, and so, so this is one of those made-up words. If any of the folks who have already made the purchase want to add on, they're available together for $65 and then $25 per remark. Let's take a look inside Cover Up, which is a lot easier to say than right. the other one this is the for only, me. This is the only art book to come out that does not have an M title. Oh. And, and, and all the rest of my art books all have M titles. And this was suggested by a fan. Cool. The whole kind of cover up, you know, your whole career in a nutshell. Oh, that's cool. Right. So here's uh, the nice table of contents and some background. Yeah, Lucho Perello. I uh, asked wow. him, good friend of mine, uh, nice. to do an intro for this book. Very hot in the comics world right oh, now. Man. He's, he's scorching right now. One of the best painters in the business. So. That's cool. Yeah, he's uh, really coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Hell, uh, he's as, as nice a guy as he is a great painter. Oh, how great. So. Oh, Lords, back in 1993. Nice. So I hand hand airbrushed every single page of that comic. Me, wow. Me and my buddies. When That's we, a lot of work. We went to our first San Diego Comic Con, and we were we couldn't be greener behind the ears just out of art school. Oh, Helena. That was the yeah. Lady Death knockoff of 1994. Oh, yeah. She yeah. tried. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the bad girl era was just sort of yeah. hopping. But, you know, you got to start somewhere. You don't get to always start with Brian. They were, they were on fire back then. You had to yeah, these guys were actually, like, they put the book out. I mean, pretty much all the bad girls were just crazy on fire. Right. You'll notice that we really didn't overcapitalize on that. Like, I just put out the stories I wanted to tell. But every company, including, I think, even... What was the Jim, spin, Jim Shooter spinoff? They did Femme Fatale. I mean, everybody was having these right. bad girl books, but they oh, really weren't coming from an authentic ballistic, place. Ballistic, double impact, all yeah, this kind of everybody. stuff. everybody. But the problem was, and what I heard from a lot of people, and, and this hurt the industry in the long run, was just quality of content and stories. They were, they were only about the character and, you know, the leather and the spikes and that sort of thing. And the problem is, is they didn't... They didn't have really good writing. They didn't have longevity. They didn't have a fan base. And so, you know, they had a pretty decent probably run for a couple of years. And then, like a lot of publishers, you know, they went by the wayside. Yep. Um, now, this, this was actually for Harris Comics when Vampirella was back then. And um, probably yeah. some of the only black and white pencil pieces. These are really impressive. So this was when Harris uh, owned Vampirella. Mm -hmm. They were putting out the Vampirella books. And this is an image of Vampy and... Panther. And Panther. Yeah. Another cool Warren. And it always made me feel good when I would get hired to do uh, covers and stuff that uh, were just black and white. And said, hey, your work's strong enough. It doesn't need to rely on color. That's true. And that that's does a, say a lot. That's a nice compliment. Uh, and then in the little indie title stuff that was I shouldn't say indie it was published by Image Jade Warriors uh, Jade Warriors and that one's called Exposure nice very much I remember those the girl era yeah bad girls yeah yeah uh, now we again we had a little revisit of Chastity and that includes you can see the header bar on that one this was more than mortal down here they did real well for a number of years and um, uh, Bloodlines this was the only uh, fully painted art uh, comic I ever did. Uh, that was the cover. So again, we get a little section here. I like this presentation on um, on the purgatory image, and I really did like that it was black, white, and red. I think it makes it for a very striking mm -hmm. image. Yeah, this had just a little color accent on the on the skulls on that one. Uh, this this book is out there. I've signed a couple of them, and there's a card. Yeah. There, there's oh yeah. A, there's a trading card, and first one I ever signed, I was in Germany, and fan brought it to me, and I go, "What is this?" Like, I want one. <laughs> a lot of times it's cool because fans, if they have extras. Sure. You know, because I, yeah, I never charge to sign anything, and they'll usually be like, you can have the extra one. <laughs> so as we peruse yep. through Cover Up, which is a color book, this one is 40 bucks. And if you like it, send us a message in the comments, and Nick G will swoop you up and start communicating with you right away. Yep. Monty is happy to add a remark. And may I really recommend considering a remark right there. That'd be kind of cool. But mm -hmm. you can choose to have a remark on cover or remark on interior. Yeah, and I can do the pencils that I'm known for. I can do uh, inks if people prefer that. Uh, just let me know Listen what your requests are. He's, he's, gonna, he's going the distance for you guys today. Yeah, yeah. You want something fully painted here, it's going to have to be something, uh, you know, <laughs> after that. But, you know, I'm He's got some serious patrons. <laughs> right. <laughs> Kolchak the Night Stalker is probably something you can uh, Night Stalker. Get, get in touch with. You horror fiend, you. Yep, that's right. That was a fun show. I, I yep. liked it. I actually really got scared when I was a kid watching it. Yep. So, Some more pinup stuff that yeah. Monty is most known for. Yeah, this is a little run on stuff from uh, Zenoscope and that sort of thing. I did. I worked with uh, sure. Mark Michaels. Oh, very cool. Uh, on a bunch of Nadia Nice covers as well. 
Um, but I can tell you, I did get permission from the, the man in black over here. There is a section inside, a, a page or two, dedicated to, to our Lady of the Night. As yep. the, those sections are coming up. The Diva of Death. Yep. So. Keep spinning through. These are really fun. The Naughty sure. and Nices. Yep. If, there's a, there's if, some pretty saucy work in there. If you're a fan of the, the Femme Fatales, then you're going to dig this book. Yeah, and if um, if the human body, particularly the female form, offends you, this is not, <laughs> not your show because this is the Monty Moore shopping show. Yeah. And you know what? Art for the longest time has been, you know, nude females, uh, nude figures, both men and women. So it's just So here's some recent zombie, images. Yeah, a little zombie tramp. It's a couple of pieces down here that were How cool. for Mile High Comics. And so these Neat. were for specialty variants. Uh, the Vampirella, that one was uh, kind of, we got, we got a little bit in trouble for uh, after the fact because apparently Denver Comic Con, oh. it had they had missed their opportunity to approve or disprove, uh, so they went ahead and printed it. Uh, and so this is, we call this the Rebel Edition because the little teddy bear sitting down there has the Denver Comic Con shirt. Uh, and, they, and they were displeased after it was out and they said, you had your chance, you didn't speak up, so it's right. done. <laughs> so if you have one of those vampy number ones. That's a nice yeah. little nice variant. Some yeah. cool ones here. So obviously, a Fathom from Aspen, Zombie mm -hmm. Tramp, Incredible, and uh, Purgatory. Also from the the current run of Chaos Comics, which I have no association with. Uh, right. I only consider myself part of the what I call the classic. It's a shot right. of uh, Tarzan and Cavewoman. Yep. So you yep. actually have a, you have a lot of good imagery here from a whole host of wonderful independents. We're also a fan, of course, of Bud Rood and oh, yeah, yeah. the guys who publish, uh, uh, Kevin over there who publish. The, these were all for Kevin, and, and Cavewoman's the only other character that I've done as many covers for. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and this one, the Tarzan one, was a benefit one for the Boise Public Library, and they had a bunch of artists oh, wow. contributed. And it, so it was an official Edgar Rice Burroughs book, which was cool. Oh, that's incredible. Here, oh, here, here, here we go. There's your page. So. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, everybody. Here's some cool pages, <laughs> so including the Diva of Death. And these are some of Monty's earliest covers from the new era. Yeah, the first five. Yeah, the fir I literally so. the first five. And if memory serves, that was the first one, and that was the second one. One of the fans actually pointed out that even though I painted this one first, that actually in the lineup, I believe this one came out first. actually came out first. And so yeah. they were uh, some of the corner fiends. Hopefully there's some corner fiends out there watching um, they were, uh, I was giving away a free t-shirt and I said, you oh, gotta, you gotta tell me which was the first one to come out. And I believe it was forbidden. So, um, and then when that was statuesque, yeah, I believe. Exactly. I yeah. Thought. Yeah. These are all great. So they were all, these were all part of limited edition comic book editions mm -hmm. that are, that are long gone because the print runs, particularly at the time were like 69, exactly. 99 and yeah. they would extinguish instantaneously. And I had never really gotten to be a part of uh, a big part of the the uh, Lady Death world. I was I was kind of a little fringe artist who had done, you know, a few things. And so, the, a, a couple of covers into it was when I really sort of realized that I had been invited to be kind of part of something that's more special in comics because I never had the the kind of fans who were so supportive who would reach out to you through Facebook. They'd come see you at shows. People like Dustin Fur came all the sure. way down to Gen Con just to see me, just to get a book signed, you know, things That's like cool. that. And uh, I was like, man, this is, I, and I, to this day, I've never experienced that. The fiend out, base is that. incomparable. We have yeah. the best fans on the planet. I yeah. call them fiends. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, go, it goes without saying. The nation is mighty. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, the nation is mighty. And there's been a couple times, as Brian can attest, where maybe I was so busy with other projects and I would have something on Facebook that said, no new clients, no new commissions, no new anything. I'm, I'm buried with stuff. But I told Brian, I said, you're the one customer that I want to keep. I have some other things I want to do and fine art and things like that. I said, but I still want to be doing covers for Lady Death. So that's awesome. Well, we yeah. consider it an honor, and you know, I think what's happened through um, this kind of uh, this business relationships grown into a, an authentic friendship. So, Absolutely. You know, we're boys now, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, true. and and you know, I remember seeing Brian off and on at, at, at we've always been at Comic Con and a lot of shows together. And uh, so we always kind of knew what the other person was up to yeah. and would say hello and hey, I hope things are going great. And then uh, I think Albuquerque it, Comic Con. Yeah, that was the first time we really got to kind of so hang this was out years and ago, have drinks together. And they really elegantly had the, this cool rooftop party. Right. And we just uh, we were hanging out, having some cocktails. I got to learn about your, your film background and working on like batteries not included. Yeah, yeah, and, we were really commiserating yeah. for a while. Like, <laughs> yeah. And, and I got to learn your film background too. Right. You know, because uh, you're a person of many, many uh, tastes and drives, and you also have a film background as well. Mm -hmm. Games, film. Yep, uh, Monty Moore is another busy guy. I did. 
film with Doug Jones and, and a couple other Star Trek guys. What was the name of that movie? Uh, it was called, it was shot, at, it was going to be called End of the Road, but it was released on Amazon and YouTube, you, you, iTunes, iTunes, as uh, One, Two, Three, Scream. One, two, and, three, and Doug obviously has continued to be even more and more high profile with sure. uh, Shape of Water. And yep. Work, it works a lot with Guillermo del Toro. But Amazing. Really cool uh, movie. And we got in six film festivals. And I think we won four or five awards. That's pretty so, cool. Yep. Well, I have a lot of respect for that. I myself have made a movie too in the year, what, we shot it in 2008. We got it out in 2010. It was called The Graves. Mm -hmm. And I do also realize that my movie is not War and Peace, but I got to tell you, the experience of making the movie was mm -hmm. incredible. I mean, it was yep. probably the most work on earth. So it was very gratifying, and even though it wasn't like a career changing for many people involved, it was so much fun. So I, I, I wouldn't have traded it for the world. I can remember trying to catch a cat nap face down in some concrete, you know, at three o'clock in the morning. And I was I was the writer, producer, and art director, so you wow. had to be on set. Wow! So even though I handed off the directing and all that other kind of stuff. You know, it was like, hey, we need to redress this set. We need some yeah. blood over here. And this was low budget. This is indie filmmaking. Sure. And so everybody wears many hats. And I can remember those two weeks being the toughest of, oh. of my life. I was like, I have never worked so hard. You know, and I can you still... Find, you keep finding this reservoir, too, to dig right. out. and like, Because it has to be done. There's really not a choice. Yeah. And the nice part is, I guess much like artwork is, is if you create a quality product, then 10 years later, you can look back and still be proud of it as opposed to saying... Oh man, let's put that away. That you know that wasn't great. This is oh, we only had this much money to do it. We only had this much time. Sure. And if you can overcome some of those things, you can still create some really cool products. I think so too. Yeah. Well, folks, uh, here's another look at our two Monty Moore hard uh, uh, books today. Uh, we Magic. Magic. <laughs> kind of an odd little known thing that there's uh, there are a couple words in my vocabulary I slip up on so one of them actually is um, and I'm doing it right now when we go to a convention and we put our tablecloths out uh -huh. it's I just I have a blind spot on the word tablecloth it sounds kind of weird table runner it's, so, it's totally true and yeah. so this one I I actually have to I behind the scenes actually really <laughs> try to memorize things that one I, I just have given up on tablecloth it's kind of weird this one Maginique Maginique yeah, there you go. So again, if you like Maginique $25 and Monty Moore will do a remark on it for you, either on the interior or the exterior for an additional $25, then we have Cover Up in a mm -hmm. hardcover format, which we could add to a current order for 40 bucks, mm -hmm. and Monty Moore could sign it for you and he can do a remark. Yep, and so, they're not in store, so this is the, the place to give them. This is the exclusive place because yep. we actually went down into Monty Moore's vault and I was snooping around, and we found them. And I'm like, let's let's show the world these. They deserve to see them, right? Yeah. And so, I don't and I don't offer remarks through my website. Normally, you have to be at a convention. This or is a special, like this that. is a unique opportunity. Yeah, and it was your brainchild to say, hey, you know, what can we do to offer something specifically to the fiends? While I was down here, yes. I, I leave to go home in a week or so. Yep. So, it's a great opportunity, especially with Fiend Fest being down here and getting. A lot of FaceTime, specifically with people that you know we've been interacting with for years. So that yep. was that's going to be a treasured memory. My my liver is glad it doesn't happen too often. <laughs> that, was, that was a little bit of work. <laughs> <laughs> I remember originally, you know, I invited you to Fiend Fest, and then Monty. And this is I'm just teasing. There was a a, a competing arts festival happening in another town, and two, Monty two hundred thousand people. Were yeah, at the other two hundred thousand people come to this fine arts thing, and then Monty said, you know, it's like, do you think I have time to like go over to that and set up there? And I was like, I gave him a more three dimensional explanation, <laughs> I think, of what Fiend Fest would be, and I kind of said, it's pretty immersive, dude. You're either like. You're there this, or not. Yeah, you're either there or you're not. And you, uh, you you chose to be at Fest, which we appreciated. And oh, yeah. And hopefully it all worked out. Yeah. I uh, I would definitely take 300 fiends over 200,000. You know, maybe people just kind of blowing by your booth. You don't know what kind of weekend you're going to have. But uh, at an event like that, I, I really think there's a good chance that 80, 90% of everybody in that room and who was there that weekend came and either saw the artist, even if they weren't doing specifically shopping, but uh, taking pictures, picking up a little something, or just glad handing and, and hanging out or drinking at the bar. That, and, that happened. And so, there was some drinking happening. You know, it, it's really it's really cool some, to be a part of that. Um, oh yeah, Dennis Pierce Moonshine. Moonshine. <laughs> From think, the we corner. already knocked down one <laughs> bottle of the honey. Oh yeah, yeah. Who knows, maybe we'll have something for yeah. our clothes in this Kickstarter. <laughs> and we'll work on honey or we'll work on Red Hot. We'll right? see. Oh, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're outfitted. Yeah. So again, if you're interested in either of these, we're live selling these books. Um, 
This one is available for $25 plus $25 <laughs> for a remark, Maginique. Ooh, you got it. Whoa, <laughs> I finally clicked in. And then we have cover up, which is, uh, are they both 64 pages? Uh, I think, 64. I think maybe this one's bigger, but. Um, so, uh, Maginique is actually 64 pages, full color and black and white, square bound, soft cover, available for $25. Monty will sign them. This one's 80. And, and then this hardcover is yeah. 80 pages. Yeah, and featuring, this one's full color. Featuring spot UV on the front and the back, $40, which Monty will sign. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Well, um, tell you what, um, why don't you show people what a remark looks like to you? I'm very okay. impressed by what's going on over here. Um, I'm, I'm not too far into this. This is maybe, I don't know, two minutes worth of work or something. Wow. So usually when I start with something like this, you know, I'll start usually with kind of nose, eyes, lips, and then just kind of form it out. And even though some of them have similarities, you know, I try to usually do the whole head kind of down into the neck, sometimes part of the collar or even the cleavage. Um, wow, that's and pretty impressive. do different stuff with the hair. Uh, a little bit with the jewelry. Uh, I can always grab an ink pen if I wanted to and, and kind of ink it up. People like the, the pencil work, obviously, that I do. Um, and then sometimes there'll be different angles. I'll do a three-quarter, I'll turn the head or something like that. But, uh, you know, it's a lot more than just an eye or, you know, a lip or a little partial face, even if the hair is covering part of it. I try to uh, draw something that I'm going to be proud to put my name on and that people feel that their money is well spent. And to me, that's a big thing that when people buy a book, they buy a print, whatever, pri private commission, sketch cover, that if you can exceed their expectations, then they go, that was a good experience, that was positive, you're, you're a good guy. And they'll, and they'll come back for more and support you. Right so, on. yeah. Not every piece ends up being the Mona Lisa, but at least you put in a good effort. <laughs> <laughs> it can be the death of Lisa. Right, ooh. Well, you know, uh, we're about a third of the way through our live selling event with the Monty Moore Shopping Show, but there's a whole lot more show to come. So please stay with us. This is a limited time offer, and our live event closes off at 5 p.m. However, we will extend the offer for anything that we offer to you today until 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll actually be officially signing off at 5 p.m. in about one hour, mm -hmm. and then... Uh, we will get all the POs in order, and if we do not catch you after 5 p.m. today, do not worry, do not fear, because we'll catch you as soon as we get back at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, 9 a.m. tomorrow, Pacific Standard Time. Now, if you like, since I figured you were here, maybe I would introduce some of your contributions recently to Coffin Comics. So if I may, I'll tell you, I will... Uh... Why don't you go do that, and I'm going to work in the background here on the remark. All right, will that work? Yes, sir. Okay. So folks, since we have Monty Moore here, here's another opportunity. This could be added on to your current order. And so this is the Lady Death Naughty Edition. We put this out in 2016. And what's incredible is that Monty Moore has made a pretty serious contribution to these. So Monty, this is a 48 page satin finish hardcover with spot UV. The cover is by Paolo Pantalena. Back cover is also a nice satin finish. And Monty Moore has made a multitude of contributions to this. By design, we actually have the Strathmore Bond-like paper where remarks can be done. Mm. And we're offering these today in this special opportunity for $40 plus, if you're interested, a Monty Moore remark for $25. If you're interested, please just put your name in the comments and Nick G will get a hold of you via, uh, via your your PM and start getting you set up. Now what I wanted to do is to show people the magnitude of Monty Moore's contribution to the naughty. Here's one That's of the first one. ones. Yep. This is a great one. I think we both have names for this one, but it's rather cool and rather dangerous. <laughs> 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 one of the few kind of, you know, a little bit more back shots that I've done. <laughs> it's great. I, I personally love the, uh, I love the pose and I love the design of the costume. I'm always fond of the design of the costume and I find that our female con contributors do a great job. It's great to see you kind of competing with the, the ladies because mm -hmm. they really are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's fun to have that kind of freedom because when you invite me to be part of this stuff, you know, you might say, hey, for this specific one, we want her classic costume. Here's what she's looking like in this story. But if I come to you and say, hey, can I draw her as a 1940s pinup with a, you know, on the wing of a Spitfire, you're like, okay, well, that could work, yep. you know, and it might be the wrong direction, it might be the right, but you give us a lot of freedom. Well, what I try to do, my, my barometer is worrying about two things. Number one is, have we seen this pose before? 
And if we have, I try to kind of move people off that. And then number two, it just goes to my barometer of would that look cool. Mm -hmm. So to me, Lady Death looks cool during doing certain things and she doesn't look cool doing other things. So if it seems to, I so we won't just do anything for the sake of doing it. Right. But however, if it seems cool and in keeping with her character, we'll give it a try. Yeah, well, I think it, it kind of just needs to resonate with you because you have the pulse of the fans. Here's another, this is the third of many Monty Mark contributions. And you'll notice with this particular art book that we just go full bore virgin art. So this one is, I think this is, I'm pretty sure this one's nine by 12, square bound, sewn in bindery. This was kind of, when I was doing my hardcover, this was kind of the benchmark of, oh, cool. of you know, quality and printing. Yeah, and so this really do, does represent, yeah, this represents your first year mm -hmm. contribution. Here's and there's an quite a few in there. I want to say there's yeah. eight or nine or yeah, something. Yeah, we cranked them in there. You, on the two volumes, you've had quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah, very, very proud to be in a book with so many fine artists. Yeah, I think uh, these are the artists that define the time. So again, this is the late ethnoidy hardcover. It's been out for a little while, but this is a unique opportunity to have it signed by Monty. If you like, I can sign it too. And Absolutely, then, you, uh, you know, Let us know in the comments, and Monty could do a remark inside for you for $25. Here's Just the, let us know. The current remark is kind of coming along there. Gorgeous. She's gorgeous. taking up some nice, some nice shape there. So I think we're counting so far four Monty more images. Boom, five. Yet another little semi-see-through lingerie image. Yeah. <laughs> I try to push the envelope of, you know, whether the clothing is coming off or going off. <laughs> there you go. So I think we have five images. And then in the back, this is the table of contents. There's a name for a table of contents that's in the back. And I forget the name. It's sort of complicated. Um, so again, we're offering this one. This is the Lady Death Naughty Edition Palo Pantalena cover. Five Monty Moore painted images inside. Uh, these are $40. They could be added to your current order. And then Monty Moore can do a remark. And that offer is good until 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time today. And you, can, you know, the great thing about having a book like this, too, is you know, you get a remark or something and it kind of becomes one of a kind. But then take it to your future events. Take it to whether you're going to see Emerald City. Bring it back to Phoenix if you're one of the local guys and start getting other people in it. You could end up with. You know, this really nice rogues gallery of artists who have all contributed to that, whether it's David Harrigan, uh, any of the, the just awesome artists that they work with, and then, you know, turn it into something that's really a one of a kind. You know, I saw a lot of people at FiendFest do that, where I saw them get like up to eight contributors in. In, I think that's a really magnificent idea, and that's exactly why we print it on the stock that we print it, because it's completely perfect for a drawing. Right. So, yeah, once again, Lady Death Naughty, this is $40. You could add $25 for a Monty Moore Remark. If you're interested in this product that we're offering right now, you could put uh, put your message in the comments, your name, that, what you're interested in, and Nick G is going to capture your data and get in touch with you. I noticed one of the things about the, you talked about the quality of being able to draw, you know, on this book or some of the other stuff that I did two sketch covers this last week, uh, and some one of them was from, you know, one of the fans at Fiendfest and. The difference in the quality of the um, paper and the ease of drawing on the Fiend Fest, Lady Death Blank, and I had done a Captain Marvel for Michael Stevens. Great supporter, great fiend, that sort of thing. And it was just more of a challenge. The piece still turned out nice, but artists, we pay attention to paper. Sure. And certain things take pencil better, certain things take ink, that sort of thing like that. And I just noticed I didn't have to work as hard. On the, on the Lady Death one, when it came time to drawing, I was like, oh, this is kind of nice to draw on. Well, that's great, great feedback. When I first ever did a sketch cover, okay, here, here's the crazy truth. Take it, take it exactly how you want to take it. Um, myself and Dan Buckley of Marvel Comics are the originators of the actual sketch cover. Oh, You may or may not story, believe this, yeah. but this is true. So many years ago, Jim McLaughlin, president of Hero Initiative, the, chair, the comic veteran charity that I volunteer for, called me up and basically said to me, he's like, dude, I need something. I need something. And somewhere in the back of my mind, I thought what might be amazing is just a blank comic book page cover with a logo and get all the great contributors to Hero Initiative to do an image on it. That would be wholly unique and that the edition itself would be limited to a certain amount, let's say 100, and these were all a unique edition. And believe it or not, um, that's exactly what we did back on the first ever 
uh, the first ever blank that was done by Here Initiative and later collected. What we needed was a major player to sign on to this. And so Dan Buckley of Marvel Comics, uh, who is, I guess, the current publisher, he's an acquaintance from his trading card days. And through Jim's relationship with Dan, he signed on to the premise. And our contributors were incredible. We actually even got a Todd McFarlane Spider-Man that oh, wow. we I auctioned off. I bet but, that um, went for a penny. <laughs> yeah, so you, you might, you know, out in the world where there's a million <laughs> blanks and stuff, like your boy was an originator, and there's even a write-up about it in our first trade about that, so that my claim doesn't sound like a, like, so I don't sound like a crazy person, but yeah, I just thought it would be kind of cool, and, you know, here we are all these years later, a million blanks later. Is it, would you say, about 10 years? The something like that, yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah, something like that. Because I can remember the first time that somebody either contacted me through Facebook or they brought me one and, and they said, you know, hey, will you do a, a blank cover? And I'm like, what the heck's a blank cover? Sure. And, you know, it sounded like a foreign concept at the beginning because you're thinking, you're going to have original art on a comic book. Are you sure you just don't want it on a piece of paper? You can frame it and, you know, put it on the wall. Right. And uh, uh, it took off like sketch cards did, right? So sure. sketch cards back in the day yeah. um, before the market got totally flooded with them. Um, you know, sketch cards were going for, believe it or not, 300 to even oh, yeah. 1,000. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Fully painted off the hook, only this big. It was right. nutty. Yep. Um, but really, sketch covers kind of replaced that and have had the staying power that um, I will ask sometimes. People will come to me and they'll say, oh, what's your budget? You know, I'd like to get a commission. I'd like to get a lady death or whatnot. And I said, you know, what do you want it on? And, and I would say a good 60 to 80% of the time, it's sketch covers. And sure. I don't know if it's ease of... Collecting or displaying well, I, size wise. I mean, my vote is perceived collectibles. Nothing, right. you know, comics are super collectible. You know? mm -hmm. let, me, dude, let me interrupt you, man. Yeah. Check this out. This is this is the $25 remark you can get from Monty Moore. I think that value is incredible. <laughs> I try to oh, if, I try to over deliver, you know. Yeah, if you expect guys expect more. Expect more. Uh, expect more all the time. <laughs> I'm telling you, any one of you guys and gals who have already made the purchase, consider Consider well, who, uh, who got the first one? Who was the first person to step up? I don't know. Only Nick would know. But I'd say who was it? Wasn't was it Jason? Jason Coates. I mean, whoever. I don't know. First, I highly somebody, encourage this, you this to this. add twenty five bucks right. to get a remark. This is not out of the ordinary. I want a scan of this thing when it's done. You're getting carried away over here. Yeah, he's probably going to hand this out to some hot stuff colorist and they'll turn it into like an amazing image. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Get in on this. This is a fun opportunity. I'm I'm flabbergasted. Now I wouldn't be the um, I wouldn't be the shameless shill selling guy if I didn't mention that Monty Moore actually did the cover for an upcoming project we have. So this upcoming project is called Lady Death Lingerie number one. And Lady Death Lingerie number one is actually going to be a free stretch goal if we reach a certain plateau in our upcoming La Muerta Chapter 5 Kickstarter. I'm not going to say what that plateau is, but I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this book. And then right here in this broadcast, I'm going to reveal the name of the next La Muerta. So oh. here we are, Lady Death Lingerie 1, cover by Monty Moore, 24-page book. 22 all new pinups by the likes of Dawn McTeague, Sabine Rich, Mike Chrome. It's a who's who. So I am happy to announce here that we'll be launching the next La Muerta Kickstarter May 8th on Wednesday at 7 p.m. And the title of this next chapter is called Ascension. La Muerta Ascension. It's the fifth story in the un unfolding saga of Maria Diaz, also known as La Muerta. So be there. Again, nice. this will be an incentive, and it'll actually come to you for free. It'll be all new. It won't be reprints. Incredible. Cover by Monty Moore. Well, moving right along, I want to let you know that uh, last year we actually released a new set called Lady Death Naughtier. Hot. Now we have Very hot. Very hot. So we have... <laughs> We had two covers, each limited to a thousand on this one. One by Eric Basaluda and one by Dawn McTeague. So we're actually making both of these available tonight for $40. Brian Polito, myself, can sign them, and Monty Moore, a big contributor, which I will show you in a minute, can also do a remark inside. 
Now, for better or for worse, you are welcome to add that to your current order of the first two books and Naughty, all of these books, you're welcome to do that. But let's take a look through the Naughty or Hardcover as we take another look at Monty's progress on the remark. This is a qualitative remark, man. You're not like phoning it in. No, I think I think this one's pretty well wrapped up. You know, I like it nice. to be kind of cohesive. I mean, that would look good as a tattoo design. Yeah, I think so too. I think, I, I think Frank, this, you know, you you might need a tattoo of this. I, I think Frank was the one that was asking for a, a tattoo. Let's remark. get a scan of that. <laughs> get a scan of that. We like put a little color on that. That's a cover. I love it. <laughs> All right, so Lady Death Naughtier with contributions by the one and only Mad Monty Moore. Uh oh, we lost audio. So what are we going to do to get audio back? What can we do? Can, I think hmm. we're going to stop and restart. Can you do that? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to grab another book. Do it. Is there some on the hall right here? Yep. Right. Oh, oh, I also lost all the. Oh, Dave Ballant says he can hear fine. Jason Coates says he can hear. Okay, oh. shit. Okay, so we can keep going. <laughs> and Sean, Sean said he lost he, audio, but it looks like he, he came back. Actually, it looks like we lost all the comments here. Uh-oh. I have all the comments. You see him? Yeah, I didn't see all the comments. Let's just get live right. again as soon as we can. Be like, hey, Troy let's... says he hears us. Troy, are we good? More cowbell! More Lady Death, more. And <laughs> cowbell. So are we live? <laughs> So, folks, we had a little yeah. technical difficulty. There was some conversation on whether or not audio was working. Girl, Lee can hear it. Jason Johnson's okay. no problem. Okay, so I, right. think, I think we're back and we're live. So uh, we had a little uh, break up there. And uh, what I wanted to do is I was discussing the Lady Death Naughtier hardcover, which we produced yesterday, uh, or last year, not yesterday. And uh, <laughs> it has uh, uh, two different cover versions, one by Dawn McTeague, one by Eric Basaluda. And I was going to show you guys some of Monty Moore's contributions. This was a beauty. I loved this, this piece. This is kind of a cool story because... Let's I, hear the story about this piece. Well, I was working on it and had a deadline and everything, and Laura had a trip to Scotland. Laura being? Uh, the other half, the, the better half. The, the better half of your household. <laughs> yes, the brains behind the operation. Right. Uh, the brains and the beauty. I don't even know why I'm even involved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, So the majority of this piece, the original painting and everything, was done in a hotel room in Glasgow. Uh, wow, that's cool. And so you had already approved it. Yes. So I, I did the drawing there, and um, because of what you can do with the Copic markers, Copic, Copic, however you pronounce it, a good portion of that could all be done. And then really just once I was home, I did a little bit of smoothing with the airbrush. But 80, 90% of that was done in a hotel room, sitting at the really uncomfortable tables uh, in the uh, Marriott. <laughs> okay, Vanessa is asking for a, uh, a naughty sign by Monty. And Brian, right on. Please. So Nick's going to get back to you on that. Nick, we'll get back to you, Vanessa, on that. Thank you so much for that. Also, I think we the comments weren't working for a little while there, so it looked like no one was commenting, but there, there's Nick was that's why Nick's typing back there because he actually sees the comments. So we right, got so, some more orders coming through. Yeah, so don't worry, folks. Uh, Nick G is in, uh, behind the scenes. You can Nick, actually Nick Jimmy show house. Nick over there, like uh, if you wanna. Nick is over there and he's still doing his job. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Nick. Yeah. Right on. Here's another great Monty piece. I like this piece. I think did we call this one Frostbite? I like that. Yes. So. Yeah, I was just trying to do something that was a little bit different, almost kind of like a pagan kind of headdress with the stag antlers and that sort yes. of thing. And, you know, she's not wearing a whole lot, but uh, still, still a really cool piece. And but again, Brian, Brian, Brian lets, lets us do anything. Well, I mean, almost anything. I mean, I, I think we always have to be classy and elegant. And, yes. And Lady Death doesn't breathe, nor does she really feel weather. Um, that's one of the challenges of being her is that complete lack of feeling of things. But uh, yeah, it doesn't. The cold certainly doesn't bother her any more than the heat bothers her. We got Troy's gonna get remark. Oh, Troy! Also, thanks so much, Troy. That's a nice to hear from you, my friend. Bill Watson. Bill, what There's up, a, what, yo? That's probably this might have been the very first published pencil piece. That this called. I love this purely piece. pencil. So look at this piece. This is incredible. This yeah. is definitely like a, a cool trick where it's just this beautiful, fully rendered pencil with just the lips. Mm -hmm. You know, I look at this one and I feel like, gosh, we should just color it the whole way, you know? Because <laughs> we have and it's great. Yep. And again, this was from an era where we're doing editions that are limited to 69 or 99 yeah, yeah. and they would just evaporate. I'm trying to see the year on that one. Sean McGill wants to go work and get some posters. So I'll tell you what, Sean, if you just stand by in the next couple of minutes, we're going to be offering some Monty Moore prints. Uh, they'll be 11 by 17. We're going to get to them in a minute. For right yeah. now, we're discussing these cool hardcovers. One, one of the things that I always try to keep in mind when I'm doing art and, and 
when before I ever did my first official piece for Brian, um, he said, you know, here's what you want to keep in mind when you're doing Le Lady Death. It's not just that she's a this scantily clad, you know, iconic kind of figure, and you know, you just need to not give it a bunch of thought, and it's just a bunch of lingerie or whatnot. As he said, she needs to be treated like a goddess. As the artist, that was the word that kind of resonated with me. That when you and I were talking about it, you just said. Hey, even when you're thinking something, even when it's very alluring and provocative or she's, you know, showing a lot of skin, there still needs to be this goddess, powerful sort of quality. It's not a trampy. It's not a slutty thing. And a lot of times people will, if they don't know especially anything about the character, you know, they just see the, you know, white skin and the, and the scantily, uh, clad. scantily clad, very curvaceous. Sure. And they go, oh my gosh, you know, wow, that's over the top. And it's like... You know, if you look at the the reason why the fan base is so supportive is because there's a lot of quality content behind the character. Well, thank you. I mean, we yeah. want people... I mean, look, she respects herself, and she is a goddess, and she does use sensuality as a weapon, or she is... She, How's that different than regular women? I, I don't know. I'm not, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not weighing in on that. Um, however, I would say that, um, yeah, I mean, she, she is a sensual character. She doesn't have apologies for it. Um, you know, in comic books, we're also dealing with exaggeration an awful lot. So, I mean, she has a lot of her attributes, both physical and emotional, are exaggerated. This is another piece that I love. This that was, was super popular. That yeah. one flew off the shelf. So we turned that edition, that image into the Naughty Edition for Chaos Rules, the comics market edition. I love this one. And, you know, the beautiful use of purple. I know a super fan, Bill Shaner, loves purple and gold, <laughs> right? You know, Bill? Yeah, he's... Yep. So this is another one. And these are just so many of the images that are being used in the naughtier. Let me... Oh, this is another, like, Monty Moore black and white trick. Yep. It's great, though. Yeah, there's another and cool Monty. And the, the, the prelim for this uh, went to one of the, the fiends that, that supported my personal Kickstarter to produce the book. And cool. so I thought this was a really cool concept. And I sent the, the original sketch to Brian. And I said, hey, what do you think about finishing that on just a killer pencil? And he said, do it. Do it. And yeah. uh, Vanessa says, fact, it's one of the reasons we women love her, too. Right on. She is badass. So, uh, yeah. You Thanks, go. Vanessa. Thank you. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, we, we respect her. I mean, uh, so that shows you some of the con the contributions that Monty has made for the Lady Death Naughtier. Uh, we are offering these today for $40. And our initial, first ever live event. Or at yep. our first ever live event, the Monty Moore Shopping Show. <laughs> and they are $40. Uh, the contents inside are original, but you can choose the following. Either the Dawn McTeague cover or the Eric Basaluda cover. And you could add $25 to get a remark that Monty will, will get right on. So, as some of you know, we actually have a Kickstarter going right now. And part of our Kickstarter is what we call Lady Death Masterpieces, The Art of Lady Death. I want to show you a little bit about that. I'm going to let Monty do a sneak peek. And you, I'm going to give you a sneak peek, and I'm going to show you the contributions that Monty has made to this book. Uh -oh. So you're, feel free to follow me, and folks, come with me because I want to show it to you in this room. We're on the move, people. We're on the move. So <laughs> welcome. We're in the Coffin Comics Brian Pulido archive. Transform and roll out. <laughs> and I wanted to show you guys a little bit about Lady Death masterpieces, the art of Lady Death. So. I'm going to put one together. This book comes, this is nine and a half by 12 and a half. It's 200 pages. It is square bound clearly, and it also has a sewn in bindery it's for optimal stay togetherness. <laughs> um, this book comes with its own slip case to keep it protected. And then additionally, it comes with its own box, so it's further protected. I, I can honestly say, because when I saw this when I was in town for Fiend Fest, and I've never had my heart in a nicer book. To be a part of this is uh, it's really an honor, and, and uh, it's just amazing when you see the, the quality and care that these folks all take with uh, producing these publications. They're not messing around. Well, we're also crazy, because most reasonable <laughs> people would put a down payment on a house, but instead we, we produced this book, which is definitely, uh, we had to do it. This is latest 25th anniversary, and we have so many contributors, you know, ranging from, and these are contributors from the last 10 years, you know, all of the hot independent artists, some of the top pros, 
This is another opportunity, like Monty would say, where you can get all the contributors to either sign or do sketches in it. Let me show you some of Monty's contributions, some more recent ones. Remember this one, my friend? Yeah, that, that was the exclusive for Denver this last year. And That's I remember right. it went live and in like, I don't know, a minute and a half or something like Yeah, it was all gone. The, all the ones that were available. You could never guess the print runs. And yeah. to, to be next to Frank Cho is like pretty awesome for me. And then there's the <laughs> beautiful Frank Cho that he did recently, last year. And again, we really do have a who's who in this book. Frank Cho, Art Germ, Mark Silvestri, J. Scott Campbell. And here's another great Monty Moore. Yep. Yeah, that was a cool piece. Actually, that was one of the ones that you let me do a, a live video. A lot of times we're doing stuff behind the scenes and, and because it has to come out at a certain time, there are certain debuts and it was really cool on this one. Uh, you were like, hey, you know what? It's okay to show the live technique. So I was doing live sessions. I did three or four videos and you can see the creation of that cover on YouTube. And um, here is that most recent image called lingerie. Mm -hmm. And we're able to get that into this hardcover. I was actually, I had this specific date cut off for all the new imagery. Right. And I have over 20 new images in here and maybe half a dozen artists who've never done Lady Death before. Oh, wow. But I had a hard date cut off and I couldn't get everything in. But this is brand new from Monty. Well, I remember when you sent out that invitation to be kind of a part of stuff. It was like, hey, you know, I would, this is a little something special, a little bit different than your regular just contribution. Hey, Tim Brockmeyer is watching. Hey, Tim, how are you? And so let me show you. Yes, sir. I was going to say that one that you just had there with your hand that was the CC one. I believe that's the first ever. Oh, yes. Lady Death digital colored piece, or was it? It's one of them. It's one of the few. So, yeah, we did one other one. You're right. There was yeah. one other one. Yeah, but so in this scenario, Monty penciled it and then we uh, gave it to CC De La Cruz to do her magic on. This was a cool piece. This was actually a piece that I drew and I donated to some of the fiends. There was a, a medical issue with one of them. And so uh, Brian had graciously created some Monty Moore edition Lady Death sketch covers. Yeah. And so when this fundraiser came around, um, they didn't even ask me to be a part of it. I said, can I donate number one? And I donated that, raised money for charity, and then CC did that. And so that, that was just a neat piece. So I'm going to flip through some really quick images. In fact, there's another Monty, we, and I love this piece, yeah. Conquest. Yeah. Here's an image by Sun K, J. Scott Campbell, Matt Mirhoff. Justin Hunt is watching. Justin, how you doing, pal? Nice to see you, man. It was good hanging out with you at Emerald City Comic Con. I hope you liked the debut of your first ever cover, from us at least, and it went so fast. Um, Jesse Witchman, Eric Basaluda, and... Dawn McTeague, Elias Chadzudis. And there's 197 images by over 100 artists. Jen Brumhill, Sabine Rich. The Denise. list really, really goes on. Denise Watson, she's watching. Hey, how are you doing? Nice to see you, Denise. Um, uh, Paolo again, Yo-Yo. Now we're offering this book in two ways. This is the main edition. It's live on our Kickstarter right now. If you are interested, I'm sure there's a link nearby. Our Kickstarter is running. It could be added on to a current reward as an add-on pledge, and we can help you with that, or it is, uh, it's a standalone reward. This one's $80. It also comes as a special edition. So this cover is by Mike Crone, and like the main edition, it comes in its own box. It comes in its own slip, slip case, and, but in this case, the cover is by Sabine Rich. The back cover is in red, spine, and it's limited to 300 copies. It will come with a signed coffin shape book plate. This is a, only a mock-up. They'll be individually numbered. It also comes with an exclusive mystery 9x12 print, two mystery metal cards, and two mystery holofoil cards. And together those items will be $150 US. So I know you have a lot of entertainment choices, but please consider adding this to the current Kickstarter. I think you'll really enjoy it. This will be a fun thing to bring around to conventions to get artists to sign for the next 10 years. William and, Edward Gibson, he says he's loving that book. And thank Stormy you. Crow say I ordered the special edition. Thank you. Thank you for ordering this. This is great. Yeah, a real labor of love. Uh, behind the scenes, it took a while to amass. Every one of our contributors will be receiving two copies of the book per contribution. So if you have five in here, you're gonna get five, five, 10 copies. Yeah, <laughs> two per. Two, oh, very nice. Yeah, so two per of the main. 
So, tell you what, let's come on back to Bar Sinister and get a look at what Monty's working on. And we're going to see where we're at on this live selling event called the Monty Moore Shopping Show. Monty Moore Shopping Show. <laughs> Always expect more. So we have about, we're about an hour into our show and we have another half hour. Ooh, take a look at what Monty's doing. So doing a little more of a three quarter kind of angle. And uh, again, I pretty much start out the same way. Sometimes you can see little sketch lines and you'll change stuff here and there. But if you're pretty deliberate with your lines, you've done it enough time. Most of the time, you could, I could just go straight to ink if I wanted to, but um, I'll be a little tentative at times or I'll change something if I say, eh, the jawline's a little long or if the chin needs to be adjusting and then I'll uh, adjust the sketch therefore. That sounds cool. Michelle Bernie's watching, Kristen's watching, Mark DeFore's watching. Hey, Mark DeFore, how you doing, pal? What's going on? Tell you what, you know, since Monty's here, we actually have a couple copies left of the Reaper edition oh, by yeah. Monty. That, that flew off. So I think we only have about like 10 that we're offering. Now these are going to go for $25. And if you were interested in one, both Monty and myself can sign it and Monty can do a remark perhaps yeah. in the corner for an additional. I don't think there's any out there yet that even have remarks. I don't think this any book, are. Did it debut at uh, Fiend Fest? This, this, it, this one debuted right after Christmas. So okay. in between Christmas and New Year's. It's yeah. got the cool back cover treatment, Ooh. green theme, coffin I comics. Seen that. And there's yeah. about like 10 of them available to the public. They are serial number. There's a beautiful image of Lady Wendy Edwards, uh, Wendy needs one. Wendy, we're going to hook you up. Nick G will be in touch with you on the Reaper edition. I actually painted this when I was down here in Phoenix last year. Oh, is that right? So this, this is an Arizona uh, contribution original. And I'll, I'll be honest, a lot of the originals, there's really five to maybe ten fiends that own the majority oh, wow. of them. And this is one that uh, Jason Coates said, uh, you know, I'd really like he to had have. add that to the collection once it was debuted. And, and I was proud to have that in his collection of great Lady Death artists that he could collects covers from. Now this uh, this particular edition Reaper could be added on to any of your existing orders so you could just message Nick. Again we only have 10 so feel Bob free to... Bob Cronster he wants both signatures and remarks. Bob we're going to take care of you. Is that man. Bob? Hey Bob how you doing Bob pal? Bob Cronster yeah. This, this, this is, I want to show off some of Bob's handiwork. This is the one of a kind Monty Moore pen that, that uh, Bob made for me. Uh, I've been doing some Western art lately. It literally has its own holster that goes on the side. He tooled all of this wow. little gun holster. And Incredible. then for working on my Western pieces, I have my Western one. And he's working on one for me now that's a pencil. And I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag, but it's going to be pretty off the hook. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, and uh, it, it's themed around some things we're doing here. So oh, neat. that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and I can tell you confidentially, Bob also gifted me a really rad pen, which is in a coffin box. But I actually have it at home and I have it in the room where I write because I actually do most of my work strangely at home and come into HQ in the afternoon. Right. Strangely, like since I uh, always started as like an independent freelancer since I started writing 30 years ago, mm -hmm. I've largely been sequestered away in a room. So I communicate with folks at HQ, you know, through like schedules and email and then in person in the latter half of the day. And sometimes we send him messages when he's in the middle of something and he's like, yeah, I'll get to that a little bit later. I'm doing my writing thing. And I'm like, right. Everybody, I'll get back to you, Chief. Everybody, <laughs> everybody, please stop texting me between nine and one o'clock. It's, it's so disruptive when I'm trying to create a, a universe. It's crazy. You're suddenly brought back to reality. Right. Uh, anyway, so here's Ooh, the looks like Pierre wants a Reaper. All right, Pierre, you got a Reaper. Uh, we're going to have Nick G get in touch with you on that. And uh, so here, here's your last opportunity for the Reaper. Brian Pluto, myself, and Monty could sign it. This was a cool warehouse find. Cool inside, this one's called Revelations, and this is, uh, I'm wrong, this is called Heartbreaker, and it's got a cool story in it. Artwork by Ra Romano Molinar. And Monty can do a remark for you for 25 bucks. Romano there. is so awesome. I've known him for a, a lot of years sure. in comics. And the, Incredible. There, there was a, a cover in there for More Than Mortal, and, and that was... 15, almost 20 years ago, and that was when he was just cutting his teeth Incredible. And, and getting into yes, it. Yes, right. And, uh, and he was great then. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And uh, if you get a chance to meet him at a show, like FaxCon in Belgium, that sort of thing, get a sketch, go by, you know, get some of his art, because uh, the, the guy's just awesome. Yeah, he's a lovely yeah. guy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he did a lot of, a lot of work for us. It was cool. Yeah, he's I mean, prolific. He's he good prolific. and prolific. Yeah. Francisca, Francisca says peace and love. Peace you know, and love. Yeah, we also got Gary joined us. 
Antonio V, join us. What's right up, on. everybody? How y'all oh, doing? Justin Hunt's going to pick up a Reaper and a Monty Remark. Fantastic. Sweet. Thank you. Let oh, me do a quick... Also wants a, a Monty sketch as well inside. Oh, Monty, you have a lot of work to do, man. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. That's what we do. I'm like Doritos. You know, buy all you want because we'll make more. Monty more. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, you're here at the live... Uh, Monty Moore shopping show where we invited Monty Moore into the Coffin Comics War Room and specifically to Bar Sinister, which is uh, our. I, I like sketching at the bar. This I feel like really at home here. <laughs> for fun, Jimmy, can you get like a long shot and kind of look over here? And for people who don't know and who haven't visited HQ, we literally in our war room actually have a bar, and the bar is a coffin because uh, that's how we roll. So you'll yeah, notice. I would want to sleep here. Yeah, it's an especially constructed. Coffin and with actual hardware. This was designed by Francisca Polito and put together by Greg Farnham. And I believe the, the bar does contain the souls of your enemies. Correct. Of course, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> everyone, everyone who had the audacity to try to cross me winds up in here. Sorry, it's just the statistics. You cross, you lose. Oh, yeah. Right, Chris, there we got Alicia. They want a reaper, so. Uh, oh, fantastic, Chris. That's wonderful. So here's another shot. And here's a bit of a recap. Well, when you mess with the bull, you get the horns. That's right. So just know that. <laughs> the main thing people got to know is, man, I'm really about peace and love. I really am, and you know, we all just want to have a good time, you know. But if you do want to cross, you, you know, you want to cross into the lexicon. We're ready. It's just the way things are. Well, and you'll defend your character as well. You should. It's it's a. Uh, it's it's a just what shows up, man. It's, it's just a decade what shows up. Of, of blood, sweat. Let's and not dedication. even go down there because now I'm getting all whipped up about that. <laughs> <laughs> take on all enemies. We'll vanquish all enemies. All right, all right. Just take yeah. it down. Let's bring it down. I am the guy who wrote Evil Ernie. I'll just remind people. Peace and love. Peace and love. And uh, peace through annihilation. Uh, up until it's time to go to war. <laughs> exactly. And when go to war, there's just go to war. Anyway, so. <laughs> On the lighter side of things, let's go back to, this is a bit of a recap, and then we're going to get into our the print portion of our show. Yeah. Uh, anything that we show you can be added to your existing order, so we have, can I do it, the Maginique. Yo, nailed it. I did it. Maginique by Monty Moore. This is a 64-page, perfect bound for $25. Monty can actually do a remark for an additional $25. And then Monty's hardcover book, which we unearthed in his personal vault, it's called Cover Up. Literally in the basement, Literally. in dusty books. Correct. Bo dusty boxes. Well, the exterior, <laughs> let me note, the exterior of the box was dusty, but the interior was perfect. Right, yeah. They hadn't moved in a while. There you go. We were, re well, we're, we're, we're finishing our basement, so I had to move some boxes. <laughs> there you go. So Cover Up, which is $40, and Monty Moore can do a remark on this for you for $25. It features beautiful spot UV and then a satin finish. What I find fascinating is that the UV coat is actually on the back too, which is an additional expense. Uh, we did also offer Lady Death Naughty, and Lady Death Naughty was produced in 2016. It features five Monty Moore images. It can also be remarked for $25. So I, I have a, a, a slight funny publishing story since you've been through a lot of these ups and downs. Sure. So uh, literally, uh, I had just gotten the proof uh, from this book, and I will not name the previous publisher, but they were recommended to me. They published stuff in the industry, and they came back, uh, and and I got this text that said, "We can't print your book," and I said, "You said what? What, 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 what? Yeah, yeah, we're we're way past that. You you came to me. You said we want to print your book, and they said it's too sexy, has has too much, you know, uh, figurative and nudes and and topless and things like that." And I said, "What?" I said, you know, this is this is absolutely crazy. And, and when that they, kind of stuff happens, I, I, it just boggles my mind. But yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Well, they had printed books. Uh, there was a, a fantasy art compendium of uh, legends and lore, and I had done Excalibur. And, and, and I was like, wait a minute, I know for a fact the reason why you guys are publishing the book is I've seen the work that you guys do. And they said, well, we're changing our model and we're no longer doing that because uh, we have people who come and tour our plant and somebody got offended. Oh, and I was somebody like, got offended. Yeah, somebody got offended. Somebody got their, their overly sensitive feelings uh, in a bind. And, and so um, uh, kudos to actually uh, Chuck Rosansky of My Eye Comics who... Uh, threatened to bring down a, a hail of holy censorship cool. thunder on them, at, at, unbeknownst to me uh, until later. And uh, so the publisher that I was did working with 
recommended the company who actually printed the book. I ended up getting the, the Spot UV cover, and they had to stroke a check for the difference of what the oh, that's other awesome. printing would have cost out of pocket. Uh, so this <laughs> survived censorship. <laughs> Absolutely it did. People put their <laughs> stuff on you. And I didn't change the book one bit, and it's actually better Perfect. for it. That's and uh, they came back to me and said, well, if you'd like to publish something else, we'll be happy to Ugh. print it. And I think I told them, what are you smoking? Right. <laughs> so you got the message yeah. totally clear <laughs> yeah, that yeah. at the 11th hour, they'll bail on you. Yeah, and, awesome. I, and I would not recommend them to anyone else. It would not be recommended. Yeah. But again, here's a great opportunity yep. to grab this for 40 bucks, and Monty Moore will be happy to do a remark for you for $25. And this is about what that remark could look like. Wow. It's not, not totally done yet. That's another uh, amazing <laughs> remark. This dude's giving it away. Get on this. So yeah. if you guys haven't added a remark, add a remark. This is yeah. amazing. I'm gonna get it on this. This is great. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> Yeah, and even at shows and things, I mean, uh, I did probably the most remarks I ever did at Fiend Fest. Wow. Um, wow. But, um, you know, normally at conventions, wow. it can be very difficult, actually, to have time to draw for all the fans wow. there, there at the show. And so... Uh, Could be yours. Yeah. So this wow. this opportunity is really the first time I've ever done something that's kind of focused on offering the remarks, offering it in a book, in a real sort of set time window of, hey, it's not going to be tomorrow. It's going to be today, only till five, and then that's it. And it might never happen again. It might happen in a year, whatever we come up with. But um, well, this you was know, an I'm, experiment. Not, I'm not whistling Dixie when I say this is a, a rare opportunity. Yeah, this is a unique opportunity. I mean, all of us, we're interested in this as an experiment, as a way to connect. So, yeah. again, recapping, we had the Lady Death Naughtier editions as Dawn McTeague or Eric Basaluda. They are $40 each. The interiors are the same. And uh, so you could pick one or the other if you like both. That's great. And then maybe get Monty to do a remark. This is Chris cool. Chris Love says those remark remarks are wow. Dude, you're <laughs> right, Chris. Those remarks are crazy. I like it. You got to over deliver for the fiends, man. It's a you special do. thing. I, my convention sketches usually aren't this nice. <laughs> More cowbell yeah, people. Yeah, we got Colin right. Collins wants a Reaper remark. Get a re Reaper remark, There's man. There's probably not many of those left. I don't know how many are left. Tell you what, though, we're getting into the last 20 minutes or less, and what I'd like to do now is I'd like to move into the print portion of our show. Sure. So we're going to move these here just so you can see them, and then I got our first print. And hey, Nick, do we have a name for this print? That is um, Naughty Not Safe for Work. That's right. <laughs> This is How naughty. So here you go. <laughs> so this is a, a print by Monty Moore. It's fifteen dollars. Actually, the first cover we did on the direct market with that was naughty. That's absolutely right. Really? So, yeah. so Nick is absolutely right in the background. This is uh, this was the full name of this one was Lady Death Chaos Rules Naughty Not Safe for Work, which meant N S F W. That's what we really named it. And That's appropriate. <laughs> and on this one, I think a remark is more challenging, but I think it's pretty cool to try. A little slick coating, but... Yeah, uh, but they have these nifty pens now that I like, the Posca ones. That's actually a white brush pen, believe it or not. And you can do some really cool stuff with these, even on the slicker surfaces. And little skulls and details, sometimes I'll actually come in and instead of just doing a little thing down here, they actually come into the jewelry or well, other aspects it. and actually hand paint Get or add tattoo. Exactly, you know, add things like that that uh, normally you wouldn't have on there. And um, it just makes them, you know, the one of a kind, which is what people want. This one would be great to actually go in and use the gold pens, oh. gold paint pens, and just add some metallics, add, I love that add, idea. add some uh, reds and things like that. So that's a pretty cool so, idea. So the print is reasonably priced at $15, and then Monty could do a custom remark, one of a kind, mm -hmm. on this for you for $25. So mm -hmm. that'd bring the total to $40, but it would really be a one of a kind item that Monty is also happy to sign. And if you like, I could sign it as well. So this is the Naughty Not For Safe, Not Safe For Work print <laughs> by Monty Moore. And a lot of times normally it shows you'd pay just $40 for the print. Could so, be. you yeah. know, depending on what the image is and, and the, the artist and that sort of thing. So even for 40, it's sort of like you're getting the remark as part of it. Because I, I, I have prints available that are that size that are 40. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we're not trying to retire. Uh, like, no. <laughs> we're not trying to hold these things for hostage, Monty. We want people to put them in their life. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's sort of like getting the remark for free. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. okay. That's what we love that. Okay, that's, that's pretty. That's a good deal. So look at it that way. You get the quality of the remark that you've seen here for $40 all in. Dave yeah. Balance is watching now. Oh, hey, no, Dave. look out, Dave. Oh. David Balance. <laughs> Run away! I'm off balance. 
<laughs> so the next image that Nick is going to help us name oh. is, Temptress. we're all trying to, Temptress. Dragon Wars? Was it well, it's Temptress, Temptress because okay. of the apple. That's, that's Temptress 2018. Oh, 2018. We might have had another Temptress. So this is another Monty Moore print that we're having available today for the special Monty Moore shopping show. This one's colored called by Temptress. Temptress. Yeah, you want to explain a little bit more about this image? Uh, yeah, I think we just touched on it on the, the book on the other side, but the original drawing I, I donated to some fundraising efforts for some uh, of the super fiends that are over in the Facebook group, uh, Collector's Corner. And then uh, it was a really cool surprise because I had no idea that this was going to be colored. And yeah, CC surprise. De La Cruz just knocked it out of the park. I mean, yes. I, was, I was blown away. And so the original cover, which uh, all the proceeds went to the medical fundraiser and Michael uh, Stevens, Stephens, however you pronounce it, um, was supported that. And uh, just to, it's, when I see stuff like this, I'm always proud of, of being involved with the, the fiends and some of the great things they do. There, there's one going on right now for um, uh, Josh Grimsley. Josh and, and Jennifer and their kids. And so I donated another cover and... Uh, uh, Sean the Wolfman stepped up and uh, he donated nine hundred dollars to awesome. uh, their mm -hmm. fundraising efforts, and I'm going to do a, a sketch cover for that, fully painted. Uh, that's all part of the donations for that. So, so let's take a moment and speak about the GoFundMe for Josh and Jennifer, which benefits their two girls who are now going through some health challenges. Mm -hmm. There is a GoFundMe, and we have it posted on both the Brian Plato Facebook and the Lady Death Universe Facebook, and I encourage fiends to share it out. And uh, people have been making contributions. Uh, because I've been asked, I'm just going to acknowledge for everybody that as uh, soon as we heard that something was going on, the Polito household and Coffin Comics stepped up to support Josh Grimsley. It's not really our place to say what we did. If Josh wants to say something, that's fine. He doesn't have to, but just to let you know that uh, Coffin Comics and the Polito household stepped up to support those guys. And... Uh, and, and we encourage everybody who loves Josh and Jennifer and their kids, anyone who's been touched by their awesomeness and their loveliness, please consider helping out because this is going to be a big challenge. Um, this is a horrible segue back into this, and I totally acknowledge that. I feel like Casey Kasem. You guys ever see that crazy case, Casey Kasem segue? But really do enc I encourage Fiend Nation to get out there and consider helping. I am uh, amazed by the stories like you just shared of what you contributed and what Sean Wolf contributed. I know the nation, some of us are kind of hardcore, but I know that everyone's got a heart of gold. And mm -hmm. that's what the outside world doesn't really get. Like, they see us coming and everyone's afraid. But oh, yeah. if you knew us, you'd know that like we're the first to come help somebody out and take care of people. So thank you, Fiend Nation. Please consider helping Josh and Jennifer Grimsley on their GoFundMe. And the link to their GoFundMe you could find in the last 24 hours of both my personal Facebook page and the Lady Death Universe Facebook page. Well, I, I thought it was funny because you shared that in the in the follow-up newsletter, and, and I described us as looking like, you know, the ACDC road crew, a bunch of roadies, and uh, I was sitting there in the in the bar with Sean Wolf and, and uh, this uh, very nice elderly couple came up, and they were looking to order some food at the at the bar, and it was just surrounded by a sea of black T-shirts. Sure. Hard drinking, but very pleasant. Everybody's like, oh, did you guys want to come up here and, you know, get uh, food? Oh, no, we're not in the way. They move out of their way and everything like that. But I think they were probably horrified that they thought that, you know, we were going to body surf them, like, out <laughs> of the, the way or something. And yet I, they were blown away by, by the pleasantness of everybody. Yeah. I think we're all happy drunks, too. Like, I don't see too many mean drunks in the crowd, which I appreciate. I'm, I'm very happy Some drunk. of us ended up at Waterburger at, like, midnight, you know. There you go. <laughs> So this is uh, the Temptation print. We're offering this once again for $15. Segue into that, and Monty Moore will do a remark for mm -hmm. you for $15. Yep. And let me do a time check, because our show goes until 5 o'clock, and we have 12 minutes. So we're going to continue the print portion of our show. I was born on the 12th, by the way. It's a magic number. Perfect number. <laughs> we have a me and Abraham Lincoln. We're offering. <laughs> this, is a, this is quite a favorite. If, if you don't want to get a, a shadow from your camera... So oh, nice. This is a little, little remark. I think maybe this one's going to Jason Coates. Or, how or, fantastic. We don't know how they're going to get shipped out, but he, he was the one that got number two. So cool. maybe that might end up being his. I don't yeah, know. we'll see. I don't know what he requested it in. <laughs> I don't know. Continuing the print portion of our show, here's another lovely image. This is one of my favorites. Yeah, this is one of my, my one of my favorites, too. Nick, do you have a name for this one? That is Moon. This is Moon. <laughs> I wonder why it's named. We have two people inside Coffin who are encyclopedias. It's Nick and Dakota. I think I'm retired as an encyclopedia. 
I think my, my, uh, my memory's gotten stretched in the last year. I was doing a convention in Indianapolis. I was a guest out there that weekend and uh, had some time for some drawing and stuff. So the original drawing uh, was done there at the show. And so I just, of course, snapped a picture and sent that over to Brian. I'm like, hey, what do you think? Cover? He's like, yep. <laughs> yeah, I love that Monty's a great multi-purposer. <laughs> Oh, I draw on airplanes. I half the stuff in here. I can tell you where it was done, yeah, and it great. has a story. They're yeah, all in different places. Well, it's great to hear the story about each individual piece because it's not like they're done in a half hour. I mean, this is right. a portion of your life. Like every time you do one. So. Oh yeah, yeah. This one is being offered for fifteen dollars, and Monty Moore can do a remark on it for you for twenty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested, just put uh, just express that you're interested uh, in the moon print with or without remark down in the comments and Nick G will be right on there talking to you. So that's yeah. the next one. In Usually the show. fully painted pieces like you see like this, um, especially I'm probably one of the only guys still in the industry who uses the airbrush and combines it with a lot of other tools, but they often take anywhere from 20 to 30 hours per image wow. to create a painting. And most of them are around 17 by 22, 18 by 24, somewhere in there. So usually uh, when people receive the originals, if they buy something, they, they always say the same thing. Wow, these look way better in person, right? Because they're seeing a low res scan on the internet or, sure. or maybe a smaller print. So when you see that as a, as a painting that's twice that size, uh, usually the, the supporters and the super fans are like, hey, how, how can I get one of those? Do I have to cough up a lung or you know what? But uh, they, they always enjoy the original art in person. Super cool. Looks like Karen Lawler wants that, that print and a remark. So, oh, oh, right wow, on. Thank that's you, a great call, Karen. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. a fun one. I, I, what I like too is just the narrow color palette, just shades of blue and gray and white. I if love you, it. If you look in here real close on her arm, uh, tucked in here is razor blades on, yeah. on, her, on her outfit and they're kind of like curved and they're tucked in there. Just little like accent things that you wouldn't necessarily always catch. Makes, <laughs> makes perfect sense to me. I love that piece. <laughs> and we've seen this image as a as an image inside of one of the hard covers, but this image, Nick, did we have a name for this one? Noble. Noble sounds good. That's noble, yeah. This one is Noble by Monty Moore and this was commissioned for which Kickstarter was it? It was either Extinction Express, Oblivion Kiss. I'm not quite sure. Oblivion. It was painted in Scotland. So Oblivion <laughs> Kiss. Yeah, that was the um, that was the Naughty Kickstarter edition. Yes, sir. Naughty Kickstarter edition, which is also here available as a print. I, I'm a huge fan of this one. Monty and I really went back and forth, uh, conspiring on the objectives. Uh, candidly, we were looking at the older Playboy centerfolds. Yeah, you wanted something classic and long, I did. very stretched out. Yeah, figure. very stretched. I want to see, yeah, the torso long, and then we were really playing around with what the costume can be. Mm -hmm. I love this one. Someone actually out there in Fiendom said uh, that she looks like the lady from Entertainment Tonight, Mary Hart. I don't know if that was, was that on your mind at all? I don't, I don't, I don't think so, but okay. you know, now that you say that, I, Mary I, Hart. I, I kind of see a little bone structure there. And Mary Hart had great legs. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Artists are very observant. Do so you want to remind people that uh, Nick's going to be contacting them as they ask for stuff? So yeah, so um, as you ask for things in the comments, Nick G will actually be PMing you and uh, uh, just confirming your order and getting you an invoice and establishing uh, the pay time frames and that's what he's been doing behind the scenes over there. <coughs> so if you guys are interested you could get this one which is called Noble for $15 and Brian Pleto, myself and Monty Moore can sign it mm -hmm. and if you like Monty Moore can do a remark on it for you. So that's uh, a another beautiful print. And then the final print that we're offering today is Reaper. So yes. Reaper we showed also as a comic book it is now available as a print for this show only uh, with a remark by Monty Moore. So this particular print is $15, beautiful shades of green, and available with a remark from Monty Moore. This painting was the first published cover that I ever did that had iridescent color shift paints. Whoa. So you see the original. So what would be neat if somebody wanted this one to be remarked is to actually come in with some metallics and some color shift kind of stuff in her outfit and reintroduce those back so that the print has a real kind of interactive quality because if you use like the purple teal colors and things like that depending on how you look at it it just it kind of sparkles a little bit almost. well that that's yeah. an exciting premise and i guess what you're saying too is that each one of these remarks this isn't your this is a unique piece of art this isn't just you know hacking it out 
No, yeah, I don't just like stamp a skull on there or something and call it good. <laughs> you know, I try to make each one unique. So even if only four people get a remark, each one of those four will be different. That sounds really cool. Yeah. So again, this is the Reaper print available for $15 and can be remarked for an additional $25. If you are interested in this print or any of the other prints that we've shown, please just send a communication in the comments and Nick G will grab you. Uh, our show will be going until about 5 p.m. We probably allow for some time after for any further comments. Yeah, just a couple minutes. We just have a couple minutes. We're going to close off all orders at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Any orders that we gain between 5 and 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time today, we will answer tomorrow beginning at 9 a.m. Because it's towards the end of our workday. So yeah. this is a great time to recap. And mm -hmm. here's a final look-see at our, the various products that we've offered today. And uh, thank Monty Moore for being kind enough for being out here. I can do it. It's... Maginique. Maginique. <laughs> that was helping. It's a team effort. <laughs> team. So Maginique is 64 pages, perfect bound, color and black and white. This is from Monty Moore's Vault. This hasn't been offered for a very long time. It's available for $25 and an additional $25 for a remark. Yep. So that, and none of these are available in comic stores currently. None of these so are available. Kind of direct this is, this is an exclusive offer that we're offering through Coffin Comics slash Lady Death Store in our relationship with Monty Moore. So next up we have Cover Up, offered for $40. It is 80 pages, hardcover, spot UV, satin finish, spot UV on the back, incredible. There is some uh, earlier work of Chastity, Purgatory, and even uh, Lady Death in here. There's a Lady Death There's gallery. Lady yep. Death gallery the first here. five covers are in there, so if people have specific requests, like you want me to sign that page, then you could just make a note, you know, to Nick or whatever. Even if it's not a uh, a remark, or I can put a remark on that front cover in the in the corner right here, yep. or or we could do uh, the remark could go right there, or it can go inside the, the inside the front cover, the front cover like that one, like that one. Whoa. Or like this one. So these There's are the two of, remarks yeah. that are samples of the quality that you would receive if you choose a remark for twenty five dollars from Monty Moore during this special The Monty Moore Show, which will be over in only a matter of moments. So this is your last opportunity uh, for the foreseeable future. The other books that we covered were Lady Death Notier. Monty has five images in here. We could remark this one. They're $40 and $25 for a remark. We had the sequel, Lady Death Notier, which comes in. And this one has even more I think so, more, yeah, more images. <laughs> These were each uh, limited to a thousand. We have uh, Dawn McTeague and Eric Basaluda covers. They're available for forty dollars a piece. The interiors are the same, and Monty Moore can do a remark for those on those for twenty-five dollars. We offered the Reaper edition, which is a warehouse find. It was offered during the Christmas season. I think we had about ten of these. They're available for twenty-five dollars, and then Monty can do a remark on those for an additional twenty-five. Yeah. So the remarks on the books are, are much like a print will be. You know, somewhere on the cover, whether it's an elaborated as part of our outfit or something that I do down here, um, it's that's kind of the artist's choice when it comes to remarks usually on, on what you do. But um, you know, my job is to make sure it's money well spent and that you guys enjoy it. And then finally, uh, we had the five different prints. I'll ask Monty to hold up a couple. Mm -hmm. And these prints are available for fifteen dollars a piece. Monty Moore can do remarks for you on these for $25 a piece. So I have Reaper and I have, do they call this one Noble, Noble. I think? Noble, I yep. have Naughty Safe for Work, I have Temptress, and then I have Moon. Moon. So yep. any of these are available for $15 a piece, and they also uh, can be remarked for 25 So let me recap the uh, rules. Uh, first up, um, this sale opportunity is open until 6 p.m. tonight, Pacific Standard Time. If you're interested, please express your interest in the comments. If we have any snafus, uh, we will begin working on any customer service related topics tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So for example, if we haven't connected, um, you, can, uh, you can send any customer service inquiries. If you do not get a confirmation of your order by tomorrow by 5 p.m., you can send an inquiry to inquiries at coffincomics.com. Monty Moore, here we are at 4.59. Is there any... Uh, 
Do you have a question? Where, where can we find you online, Monty? Where can uh, folks? Um, I'm pretty active on uh, Facebook. You're welcome to send me a friend request. Uh, follow my artist page, Monty M. Moore. Uh, and then I have a couple different websites, but the main one is Maverick Arts, or even the short version is Mav Arts. And that's where you'll find original art, prints, books, you know, things like that. Um, and you can contact me through the site as well, but that's my primary commercial site that I've had for mm, 26 years or something. It's amazing, yeah. and the friendship is, is only uh, growing with Monty Moore. Um, I want to just let you know that we do have a Kickstarter running, and in my Facebook feed and in the Lady Death Universe Facebook feed, we have links to it, and we encourage all of you who have not, please consider backing our campaign. Um, I just want to thank Monty Moore for our inaugural shopping experience. This thank is you. the Monty Moore <laughs> Shopping Show. Thank you, Brian. You're very, you're very welcome. If there are any, this is our first time, full disclosure. So if there are any glitches that come up, you could be sure that from a customer service point of view, we're going to get it all tied up. If you have any questions about your order, or if we do not reach you for whatever reason, feel free to send an inquiry to inquiries at coffincomics.com. I request that you please do not um, send the message to me. It'll get more directly to Nick uh, that way. Uh, we will begin, after today at 5, we'll begin answering those inquiries tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So you guys have been great out there. Thank you so much. I want to thank our our cameraman behind the scenes, super overqualified, the one and only Mr. Jimmy Calabrese. Thank you kindly. I want to thank behind the scenes, Mr. Nick G, who's recording your orders. And I would like to thank Monty Moore for being our first guest on the inaugural uh, shopping show. And I've been your host, Brian Polito. You've been great. Holler at your boy. Talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Sworn. Sworn.